G'day, g'day, homies. You're watching the True Footy YouTube channel with J-Man and the Joyce Meister. Joycey, how are you? Pretty good, Jesse. What about yourself? Yeah, not too bad, man. Not too bad. I mean, it's been a bit of a long slog without footy happening because yeah. uh, it's particularly from a content perspective. I've been making a lot of AFL Evo videos. I've got like three weeks of scheduled videos coming out, um, but yeah. I'm not going to lie. The views have dried right up and it's yeah. making it very, very tricky to stay motivated, but it seems like we do have mm. some good news on the horizon. Football might be back, Joycey. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I'd love football to come back. Um, almost feels like there's a bit of a part of your weekend that's missing with no footy, you know. Um, I always like to just chill out and watch a random game while I'm eating my lunch or, you know, having dinner or whatever. And then obviously love to follow the Dockers pretty closely, so watch all their games. Normally watch an Eagles game here and there. So, um, yeah, big part of my weekend missing, but uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel, I think, Jesse. If I'm completely honest, I think this um, this whole no AFL thing, I'm trying to work out what bothers me more. Like The fact that I can't watch the Eagles every week, which definitely sucks, but I also think mm -hmm. from a YouTube perspective as well, it's been pretty brutal Like just watching the channel slowly, yeah. slowly sort of like... I mean, we still get like good comments and stuff like that, and there's a lot of the same people still watching, which I really, really appreciate. Uh, but yeah. at the moment, it's just we're running a little bit dry, so I cannot... Yeah. Cannot wait for football to come back for so many reasons. I want to ask you as well, like, because you, I, I think I've said it off air, but like, I've mm. kind of stayed away from this AFL COVID topic. Like, uh, yeah. I said, like, I've only done one video on this topic uh, since I got back from Thailand. So, I think one video in general. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, just because it's such, it's been such an ever evolving situation. There's always, it's always been completely conjecture and nobody actually knows what the hell is going to happen. But it seems yeah. like now we have a little bit more clarity. But what do you think about like the whole hub situation that was being mooted and all the different like ideas for it? What did you think about that? Yeah, I'm a little bit, a little bit torn. I suppose if that's what it's going to take for any football to happen this year, then, um, then I'd say go for it. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting um, with the limited time span. You know, we're going to see the whole of AFL lists utilised. Um, that's going to be really interesting. Um, so the quality of football might actually not be as good. They're going to be playing more often, probably going to be more tired, could be more injuries. But um, oh, if we get football out of it, then I think it's probably worth it. What about yourself? Yeah, I'm the same as you in that I've kind of wanted football almost at all costs, really. Not, not yeah. within, obviously within reason. The health of the public health is more important. But yeah. Um, yeah, I obviously want football under any circumstances here. But it is, I must admit, like all pretty much every hub situation that was floated up was I kind of was like, mm, I don't, I don't know if that's fair or whatever. Because I mean, if you think about it, like what they were saying, hubs in like, mm, or maybe Northern Territory would work. But like if you had them in WA or Queensland, for instance, then does that mean the Eagles and Dockers play every game at Optus Stadium or how does that work? Because every game's a home game and it's the same yeah. whether you play in South Australia or Victoria. So I think yeah. they were talking about like having a hub in Perth, for instance, yeah. or one hub. Um, but then the Eagles and Dockers not playing any of their games there, which yeah. kind of makes sense, but it also like it feels almost kind of redundant. Um, it's pretty crazy. But I think they're also, I think the the most dire situation or the 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 last worst case scenario for them was going to have like a 23 week hub somewhere in like the northern territory i think they kind of poured water on that but yeah. what did you do you think like cuz the players have been pretty opposed to that do you think it's it would yeah. be such an unreasonable ask to get players to stay in a hub like that no i think the players are being pretty soft about it to be honest um if you think about what the regular um worker has to go through um, a lot of guys, you know, fly in, fly out. Um, they're getting paid, you know, a lot of money to do this. You know, they don't really voice the same concerns about leaving their home when they're going to Vegas and then Barcelona for like three months during the off season, do they? So I don't really sympathize, to be honest, with the players. Shots fired. I like it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I do agree generally. Maybe, like, what I think is um, 
I mean, like, if you compare it to, like, other sports and, like, golfers and cricketers or tennis players or whatever, they travel for, like, large portions of the year and they they are definitely yeah. without their family for a long period. It yeah. doesn't have to be six months, I reckon. Like, uh, we did say that was, like, the least, the worst case scenario, but I reckon yeah. they could have done it in, like, eight-week blocks, you know? Yeah. And if, if you spend, like, six or seven weeks over uh, interstate versus, like, not being able to play and, you know, risk the the financial health of your club... I mean, like, mm. some of these players are like, I don't necessarily want to play football this year because I don't want to be away from my family. But, I mean, if the, we don't play any football this year, in theory, a lot of those pl- teams could go under. And, I yeah. mean, there's talk, there's talk, right, of, like, I think it's Adelaide have already delisted eight players for next year or something. Yeah. So, because they're anticipating so much less, you know, football department spending, um, less players going to be on the list. That's eight players delisted already. Like, this is going to be ha- having a huge impact on you know how many kids get drafted and stuff like that, which is yeah. you know, pretty pretty brutal. But I was thinking like maybe six to eight week hubs would have been fine, and it is possible we might have to start the season that way. What do you think about like how do you think the AFLs handled this from their perspective? Because like I I use the phrase football at all costs, and they've been accused by some of of trying yep. to play footy at all costs. What do you think? How do you think they've handled this? Um, you know, I actually think the AFL has been not too bad on this. They're purely um, operating on information provided from, you know, um, health professionals that the AFL consult and employ. So um, I think so long as it gets um, boxes ticked from all the, all the right people, I don't see why um, we need to hold it back any further. Um, I think originally I was a bit more opposed, uh, but now that you know, I it seems like the isolation um, has actually really reduced um, the growth of the virus in Australia. I think, um, yeah, I'd be happy to see a situation in which football is occurring soon. Yeah, what about yourself? Yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, I remember. You, I think you might have been a well. And reasonably so, people in general were critical of the AFL for like maybe pushing hard with round one to try yep. and get. Um, obviously, there was no crowds, but uh, obviously, just to get football in. Um, and at the time, obviously, the the threat or the apparent threat of COVID was not higher, but it you know it was more of an Felt unknown higher. about. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. It was yeah, exactly right. We didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but I mean, yeah. I respect Gil and and you know they them in general for like they they're employed specifically to to maintain the best interests of the league because no one else is yep. going to do it. And if the yep. AFL is going to be under financial duress in the future, yes. and, you know, risk losing teams. The, and there's also contractual obligations with broadcasters, right? So, like, mm. if we don't play any football, then we're breaking our contract with, um, with broadcasters and yep. you, you might have to still play players. Like, it's just going to be a disaster. So, I can understand why the AFL is pushing as hard as it, um, as it possibly could to get football and as a selfish fan I'm grateful for that but I also just think they're kind of doing yeah. the right thing by the game we love yeah. um, but I mean thankfully like the hub the hub system might just be out the window now I think there was too much player up position from what it sounds like um, mm-hmm. and then the media maybe sort of got the wrong end of the stick or were deliberately <laughs> misreporting it as plan A but it yeah. seems like now we might get a perfect no, sorry, not perfect, but like a, an actual home and away season, yeah. which is good. Um, just a little deviation, though. I want to talk to you about and get your view on like, and Kane Corns weighed in on this about how, you know, obviously restrictions in WA are lifting earlier because, yep. you know, we've flattened the curve a lot more effectively. Yep. What do you think about like the Eagles and Dockers not being able to train in groups of 10? Yeah, I, I don't really agree with that, to be honest. Um, I think now that the state restrictions have been lifted, I think um, each club should be able to act upon its own state's laws. Um, so if that means Fremantle and Eagle can have a kick-to-kick, I, th- I think that's not too bad. It's only in groups of 10, remember, as well. It's not a full mm. training session. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't exactly think that's super fair um do you agree with kane corns for the first time ever (laughs) yes i do actually yeah i don't normally agree with kane corns but i i did this time um no he's pretty spot on he he talked about you know the afl being worried about frio and eagles getting a competitive advantage from this when there's victorian teams that play you know 
uh, three quarters of their season at Melbourne, um, in Melbourne. So, yeah, I sympathise. Well, I agree with Corns um, mm. on that 100%. I think um, it's important to say on your previous point um, that people are looking for certainty with these hubs. Um, and the fact is that this virus, there's, it, there is nothing certain about it. So we need to, the AFL needs to constantly revolve and change what the season and what footy is going to look like. So I think people being opposed to these hubs, that's just, and people, you know, commenting, this isn't going to work or this isn't going to work. They're sort of trying to look for certainty when there mm. is not certainty, when there's uncertainty. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And they're they're not very sympathetic about what a tough job the AFL has of trying to navigate through this crisis and actually produce an actual season. I've got a little bit of an unpopular opinion on the cane corn thing. I agree agree with what you said, but there there is a part of me that understands what what the AFL's concern is there because there's a lot of criticism on this season already. And Uh I don't know, and it'll be my next question to you, but I don't know if I fully agree, but there's there's going to be this assertion that there's an asterisk next to whoever wins the 2020 premiership and the AFL is desperately trying to make sure that there's no evidence of competitive advantage because then you no one will look back and be like oh the Eagles won the flag in 2020 like they yeah. could train four weeks earlier than anyone else yeah. I kind of sympathize with uh well uh, yeah empathize with that concern however like you said it's 10 blokes having a kick to kick realistically um and maybe some contact training so how much of an advantage is that I don't really know. And just, my concern is, well, would they have done it the other way around? If WA had the, the lower, the mm. higher restrictions, would they have held back Victorian clubs? Just remember as well, like teams don't all start pre-season at the same time either, right? So we don't yeah. see a massive competitive advantage each season because Adelaide started their pre-season three weeks before Collingwood. Mm. Um, yeah. And I understand that's drawn out over a longer, a longer period. So, um, which, which does make it a little bit different. But, I, yeah, I don't really see um, where the advantage will be coming from, to be honest. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And now for the big question. 2020 season, is mm. it going to have an asterisk? And if not, at what point does it get an asterisk? Like, well, how much of a season do we need? What, what are your thoughts on that? I think if the AFL, I think if we decide that we need to have a season then we need to, and the fans, I think it's actually really important that they 100% back the validity of whoever wins the flag. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, the team that you hate. I think it's important. It really annoys me um, because I feel like fans of an opposition team might use this for ammo, saying, oh, you won a premiership, but Mm. it was in 2020 when the season was tainted. So I think fans actually have an opportunity obligation to to really say if if we're going to play then we're going to play and the premier is the premier there's no asterisk at all in my opinion yeah well said i agree like i think you'll never get that though like it'll depend who wins the flag as to who accepts the premier do you know what yes. i mean it, it'll be the same that in the premier league we're both liverpool fans right yeah. if liverpool get handed the the premier league title two games yes. shy of clinching it how many yep. Man United fans are going to be like, oh, but you didn't really win it. Like, it's yeah, going to happen. It, exactly. It's, oh, just, it's, it's 100% going to happen. Yeah, um, it's just the which attitude. Which is a bit annoying, fans. but it doesn't, it's, it doesn't really matter as long as you... It's, it's, it's about your own opinions, about your own thoughts. So if you're happy with the outcome, then you're happy with the outcome. It doesn't really matter what yeah. someone says on Facebook. Well said, and I've been I've had people try and tell me the 2006 flag is tainted because Ben Cousins yeah. had a meth addiction. <laughs> All right. If um, anything, it makes that harder to win a flag, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's an achievement. With um, I agree with you. Like in terms of the validity of the season, for me, it's if we get a 17 round season, every play everyone plays each other once, and we get four finals, then I'm satisfied that that is at least a fair season. Yeah. If we are ever cutting below everyone playing each other once, which I don't think we will, I don't think the yeah. AFL will accept that, um, yeah. then for me, then it's, yeah, that's not fair. But um, but yeah. at the moment, plan A, I'm, I'm comfortable with where it's at. Mm-hmm. The last question though, yep. October 31st is ideally the grand final target. Like that's when they want to have the grand final. I don't know if that's because the MCG will be available then, but not in November. Yep. But let's say, let's say the MCG hypothetically is not available. 
Mm-hmm. Where do you think... What should be their process on deciding where to play the grand final? It's a really tough one. Um, it, it kind of depends. They probably need to set rules early in terms of that. So are they going to reward the team who's top of the ladder, for example, mm. and give them a home final? But if the MCG is not available, then I guess they can't make that not available for Victorian teams and available for yeah. interstate teams. So they either need to decide, are all the stadiums going to be available and we'll give it to whoever finishes top? Or the opposite of that is they just hold it at like a neutral stadium, which I won't, wouldn't be opposed to. Um, I know it's going to be a, probably a big loss for the AFL in terms of revenue, uh, but you know I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be entirely opposed to a grand final in like Sydney between, I don't know, Eagles and Adelaide because I feel like that's I'd love that a fair too. process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, fair enough. I agree with that. The the, the tough one as well is like um, we don't even know if crowds are going to be able to attend, right? So if crowds can attend, then yes, true. I want to say MCG would be great. But if the crowds can't attend, there's absolutely no point to having it there needlessly. Yep. Um, and then also I think the, MC, the AFL's got that con- contract with the MCG. So like what happens there? Like do they yeah, they need to play the grand final of the MCG or can they move it? Are they... Because the problem is as well, let's say they start at the start the season and say, all right, Optus Stadium is the second best ground, and this is hypothetically, second best ground mm-hmm. in, w, in Australia, let's play it there. What if the Eagles yep. make the grand final and finish second below Collingwood or something like that? And then, then you have, yeah. I mean, then again, it's the exact same disadvantage we had in 2018, but it's still well, it's not the same there. disadvantage every interstate team has when they make a grand final against the yeah. Melbourne team, really. Yeah, very um, true. Adelaide Oval is probably a good shout, though. Yeah. Like, I don't feel like either side's going to, Touch yeah. wood, I don't think any side's going to make the grand final from here. But Yeah, I saw a great comment during the week, Jesse, um, on Facebook, and it said, the fans have supported um, all the clubs through this time, not, not big corporate sponsors. So I think this year, definitely this year, and hopefully going forward, the AFL needs to give the grand final back to the fans and take it away from the corporates because the fans are the ones who are still paying for memberships without going to games. They're pretty much giving money to clubs for nothing mm. because they're not receiving any anything for that apart from maybe a cap and a sticker. Um, give, the, uh, give the grand final back to the fans um, and who knows, like we could even a grand final in Perth with 100% fans, that'll have... That'll, arguably be better than an MCG grand final with only 40% of fans. Yeah, I like it. Well said, mate. Well said. All right, man. Well, it's been real. It's been a good catch up. I hope uh, I hope it's not too long before we get to talk about some actual footy going on. I'm thinking, yeah. well, I think the last I heard was May, middle of June, we might get some footy. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's ambitious or not, but uh, gee, it would be nice because that's only about four or five weeks away. We're effectively in the pre-season now, so that's not too bad. Um, Thanks for coming on the show again, Joycey. And yeah, uh, cheers. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Sounds good. See ya.